I hear from people all the time. No one knows what happens after we die. No one's come back to talk about it. I tell them that this just isn't true. Just because they may not know. Many sages have went beyond the veil of this world into the next. There are those who even while in this world at the same time or in others these people just aren't looking in the right places talking to the right people and are reading the right books they don't know how to get to the right experience I'll reveal to you from one of these spiritual masters from one of his books concerning things beyond this world these are the teachings of the great master Yehuda Patiya. He was my teacher, his teacher. Yehuda Patiya learned these things from practical experience, as you'll see. It's not dogma. We're talking about what he actually came to see and know to be true through personal experience working with souls that are between the worlds. Rabbi Yehuda Patiya was born in Baghdad in, 15, in 1859. He grew up to be the foremost student of the Ben Ishchai, the greatest mystical sage of his day. He published many very technical books about the divine names, about the order of their unfolding, how they relate to the soul, and many mystical subjects most of them written from a very scientific perspective. But one unique book that he has left us with describes his actual experience, his teachings with souls after they departed from their body. Everyone desires greatly to know about the soul and the body and what becomes of the soul and the body after they depart from this world until they reach their final resting place in the Garden of Aden. There to find comfort with the souls of the righteous and the pious. I'm reading to you now sharing to you now what's written. I've translated myself from the teachings of the book Minchat Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda writes there that I've decided to write this book based on what I asked of the earthbound souls that have entered into other people's bodies. Sometimes it presents itself as the phenomenon of schizophrenia. People have multiple personalities because another soul, after their birth, enters their body, a soul that's trapped between the worlds. It hasn't had a chance to enter the place of cleansing. People call it hell. He had home. It doesn't fit where they go temporarily for cleansing. It can't go there. It can't go to the Garden of Eden either because it hasn't been cleansed yet. So they're trapped between worlds, and these souls have never flee into other people's bodies. And these souls come to me in order that I may heal them and allow them to continue in their journey, their growth. I would ask of the spirits all types of questions, such as what happens to them after their deaths. These souls had not yet been to Gehenna Hell or had any knowledge regarding it since they did not yet merit to enter its fixing fires. That there was one soul who had, and I prayed, and then I received permission from the Holy One. And that soul returned to me after it had been rectified and gone to Gehenna, to hell. The Spirit told me the uppermost level of hell is where he was punished, and what happens to others that are punished there. He also explained to me. What's to happen to him after he was released from hell and allowed to proceed to the Garden of Eden? Know that all the sins and transgressions that a person does 
by themselves, with the exception of the sin of Adam, which is is a residue and inflicts all of us and causes death to human beings. Otherwise, our souls and bodies would have the potential to live forever. And this, and this, all these evil things that a person does, all the errors they make, all the holy things that they could have done but they didn't, and causes them to be enclosed in a shell we call klepa, which is a type of negative energy that prevents the flow of the reception of the divine energies, the voices of divine inspiration, creative divine inspiration. And, this can, and the contamination of the, of the serpent from the fall of mankind, each in accordance with their own individual lacking, so is this shell that prevents the flow, but all is dependent on a person returning to the God, repentance, turning away from what they did before, and these things become turned even into merit if they rouse a great love for God in their returning away from their errors. And because through this returning to God a person has the ability to cast off from oneself the contamination that comes forth from sin. Even if the sins are, are great So now let's get on with one of the actual case studies of our teacher, Yehuda Vatiya. He teaches us, concerning one of his souls he helped, that in the year 1915, on the 15th of Elul, there came to me a young girl, 17 years old. Her name was Katan Bhattazarya. So Katan Bhattazarya, she told me she was an orphan as her father died the year before her mother went to Persia to visit her brother there. He was ill. And she left me, my younger brother, and my sister with our aunt. My mother's sister, she was angry very much, consumed in anger and regrets, and cut and found it difficult to handle her aunt's anger and curses, and she wanted to leave the house for good. And she was troubled by her, to add to her troubles, that after the Sabbath I cried and wailed on my bed with all my body concerning my bad fortune, and all of a sudden I felt like a giant cat. It fell between my shoulders, like a great cut had entered my flesh, and after it felt as if I, it had entered my left arm. My arm became very heavy to the point that I was no longer able to move it. After that day, my arm only hung down. I trembled at times, and my eyes rolled up and down. My feet would move from side to side at times. I would walk back and forth. And when I lay down on my bed, I was not able to sleep as I heard the sound of a hammer striking. When my mother returned, we went together to an Arab mystic. After going there many times, he told us that I had a very strong demon in me. He tried, but was unable to remove it from me. After this, I went to the grave of Yoshua, the high priest, and prayed there a lot. I began to tremble greatly. I saw a man of great honor dressed in white. I was unable to speak with my mouth. He stood about four feet from me. He did not speak. Cotton cried over her life and the shattered heart in her midst. To bring mercy upon her, I did... Yehudim, divine meditations on the divine name, upon the spirit that was in Katan's body. The spirit began to express thoughts and speech and screaming. The spirit said that she was a harlot. I asked her name, she didn't want to say. After many times during the Unifications of the divine name, Yehudim, 
she finally said her name and her name was Rosa. The name of the spirit in Katan was Rosa. She told me that in the time she was dying, the demon Lily came to her and this caused her soul to be troubled very much. She said my soul wanted to escape from my body before Lily could come closely, put a sword to my throat. By this there went out my soul from my body. There then came to my soul three angels of rage. They stood by my head and asked, what's your name? They had come to strike my body to purify it for three days and nights with rods of fire. Then there came another angel who I remember also appeared as an angel of rage. It was he who took my soul from its grave and struck it with a big hit, and by the striking my soul was propelled in the cough hakela, the hollow of a sling, and threw it until it reached the entrance of the supernal cord in the firmament. I stood there naked as the day I was born. Three angels came out from the spinal cord and they gave me a shirt that was black and white. Another garment to cover below my waist. Then I was brought before the court. It was a court of three judges. The greatest of them sat in the middle. Their faces shined as great as the sun. The court asked me, what's the name of your father and mother? I did not want to answer them. Then the officers of the court struck me with lashes of remembrance till I could endure no more. The first blow made me feel like a spark from a fire. The second blow made me as a burning coal. And the third made me as dust. And then the court enlivened me and I told them my father and mother's name. It was made known to me I had been incarnated in a man living in Basra, Iraq. He was evil and a wicked man and did not resist any kind of lust and abomination he could do. He changed his religion and then he died and was made into an evil spirit and entered into the body of a woman. All this is, re all is revealed by this, to the supernal court. Even what's hidden in one's heart. There's nothing that can be concealed from them. They gave me a document. It was not like a document of this world. I opened it and it spoke to me. I read it. I read in it. And I could speak to them. But I did not know what to say. The first judgment in the next world concerns one's learning of the divine truth. And this is seen by the one who's given the document and they can't read it. They are then asked why they did not learn the spirituality of God in this world. According to one's preparation, learning, they're able to read their document given to them by the supernal court. In this document is listed all of one's transgressions, abominations they did while they're alive. You don't want to ask the court to have to read this document for you. You don't want to trouble them with this. The court will tell you what's not written in the document. Atonement comes from the embarrassment you feel, and if they got to read it to you. I t told them that I had non-marital relations. The relations outside of the context of marriage for five years. And they asked me how many times. I said I don't know for certain. 50 or 60. And the head judge of the court answered and said it was a hundred times. To find more of this teachings, this book at God's Secret.